Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon. This back here, that's Bernard. He's my October co-host. Has been for about six years now. He's had a bit of a medical emergency. If you saw my vlog a couple days ago, you know what I'm talking about. But he's okay and he's here and he's ready to get down to business. Today I've got a spoiler free book review to share with you guys. I was lucky enough to get my hands on a copy of this book thanks to NetGalley and the publishers. And today we are talking about The Shadows of Rutherford House by C.E. Rose. Now this was the first book by C.E. Rose that I read and um, I really enjoyed it. We'll start, we'll start by saying that. Loved it and would definitely read more of her books in the future. Um, I'm just trying to think now what's the best way to tackle this with no spoilers because you know in my book talks I love to t walk you through the entire book um, with spoiler warnings of course but anyway this book is told from three different perspectives three different timelines at the very beginning even though the book transitions smoothly through the timelines at the beginning I had a little bit of trouble um, keeping track of some of the characters because a lot of them would be in all three of the timelines or at least mentioned in all three of the timelines and at first I'd have to stop and think like okay who was he in his primary timeline but once you got a few chapters in it became much easier and then I had no problem so no real complaints with that but just something to keep in mind if you read it and you're like that's normal. It took me a minute too. <laughs> um, so our three, the three main points of view we get are Millie. She's in the 1960s and she's the housekeeper at a grand home, Rutherford House. The second character we get is a man named Duncan and he's in the 80s and his timeline mainly concerns him. So he's the son of a family that works for the main house. They live in a small house on the property. So he's the son of that family. And so his timeline mainly involves him and the daughter of the people in the main house from the 1960s timeline. And then we have a present day timeline where we meet a girl named Christy. And she is a, I think a psychiatric nurse and she's dealing with a patient. And that patient ties in with the other timelines and um, I honestly went into it with very not low expectations but like no expectations I'd never heard of it never heard of the author I was kind of like let's just see where the, this goes whenever there's a house in the title I'm like me that's for me and this one definitely was it was fast-paced the chapters are very short I love a good short chapter um, and it, like I said, it zips between the timelines, but seamlessly. I thought it was great. Um, it's a, I guess you'd call it a, a bit of a mystery slash thriller. Leaning more to the mystery side, I would think. Maybe. <laughs> and then when you get to the end, there's two. I would say there's two twists. One, I, they're not incredibly shocking but I was satisfied I was like those are decent twists I see what you did there and I appreciate it and I really enjoyed it I was sad when it was over I enjoyed the characters because I'm very much a character girl like the plot this is the plot I mean obviously I want a good plot but if a characters if the characters are well developed and I care about them the plot's secondary to me I know some people are the opposite that's fine whatever whatever floats your boat and gets you reading but um, I cared a lot about these characters there were some characters that were incredibly unlikable but even then you're kind of like okay <laughs> I I like a good unlikable character and um, I thought it was fun read all around quick fun I finished it in a couple sittings and I believe it comes out November 10th. I'll put the date on the screen if that's not right, but I'm pretty sure it's November 10th. So I would definitely recommend. If you love, oh, I will say this though, it's not really a haunted house story. When Whenever I see a house in the title, I always assume that that house is haunted. I mean, this house is kind of haunted, not in the traditional ghostly sense, 
but it's haunted. It's haunted with its own history, if that makes sense. It's haunted by its own past. It's haunted by the things that have happened there. The, the, the deeds people have done there. The things that have happened. So, haunted in that way. But not, not necessarily in a more paranormal kind of way. So I still loved that. So, yeah, if that sounds like something that would float your boat, definitely check it out November 10th. I loved it. <laughs> I just loved it. Next up for me is The Exorcist House by Nick Roberts. I've seen, I'm a member of a few book groups on Facebook and I've seen that one, the title recommended over and over again. People loved it, loved it, loved it. So I, I started reading it last night after I finished The Shadows of Rutherford House and I've only just read the prologue. And already I think this is going to be a spooky one, which is perfect for October. And then after that, we're also going to read The Ghost Eaters. So I'm hoping to get both of those done by the end of October. And a third one, possibly. I did this filter on TikTok and it says, like, let this filter pick your perfect fall read. So I did it and um, it gave me a title, Go Hex Yourself, which I think might be like a fun sort of rom-com with witchy elements. I don't know. I know nothing about it, but I'm going to order it tonight and read that as well. So I'm hoping to get that up before the end of October as well, if not the very beginning of November. Anyway, I'm just chattering on now about nothing, so I'm going to let you go. <laughs> go enjoy your day. I just wanted to get this quick little review up because I gave it five stars on Goodreads. If it sounds good to you, definitely check it out. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day and I will see you again very soon. Bye guys.